Happy New Year. It's 2019. Stogie Geeks, episode 291. This week, Dan Davison, sales manager for Queensbury Cigar and Pipe, cupofjoes.com. We're going to talk a little bit about kind of 2019 predictions, talk about what we have been smoking over the Thanksgiving, Christmas, and or holiday and New Year's, and talk a little bit about the industry right here on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome. Episode 291 of Stogie Geeks. I'm your host, Joe Hozempa. Thank you for tuning in. Happy New Year to everyone. Hope everyone is not uh, broke from the New Year's and Christmas or whatever holiday that you celebrate. It is, uh, in my opinion, cigar time, so it's Bloody Mary time. Of course, I picked a cigar that I compare with the Bloody Mary. Uh, I'm going old school today, but I want to introduce our guest, kicking off 2019, Dan Davison, Queensberry Cigar and Pipe. Dan, how's it going? What's going on, Joe? Good to see you. Always yeah. good to be back on uh, Stogie Geeks. Yeah, once again. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah, if uh, Happy New Year to you. Um, it's crazy. If you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash two nine one, that's this episode. You have the link to uh, all of the cigars that we're going to talk about uh, there, so you can follow along with us. And um, yeah, we, we, we've put together a, a couple of cigars that we want to take some time out and, and talk about um, and then kind of elaborate. You know, I, I like to, to give the Stogie Geeks rating and let you know what I was doing at the time uh, of, of the stick because not all sticks are portable and not all sticks are golfable or fishable. And some of them require a ton of maintenance. Some of them require a ton of maintenance with uh, lighters. Um, um, I know last year in March, I complained about my lighter debacle. Uh, it still continues. So, um, I'm yet to find a lighter that works. I have Stogie Geeks listeners had emailed me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com and they gave me a bunch of tips as to how to keep a good lighter. Right. And, you know, they said, are you buying the butane, the, the right butane? I says, yes. I use it higher end. Sure. I'm not going to a convenience store and get butane. I'm wanting in the real deal. You know, uh, does it have this branch? Sure. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting was one listener took the time out to say, well, when you fill it, do you light it up right away? And I'm like, yeah, of course I do because it's empty, right? And I want to light a smoke. And they said, well, you should let it sit for five minutes because of the, 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 the way it freezes and the, the seals and whatnot. <whistles> Didn't work. So uh, if anybody knows of a lighter that is awesome and works, Joe H. at com. Dan, do you find that? I find oh, yeah. that three months. Like three m- Now, I'm pretty diligent with my lighter. Like, it's my lighter. It's in my pocket. You know, it gets passed around every once in a while to a shop or something like that. But three months. And it's terrible. Like, it, 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 they, they flicker and they, they do all weird stuff and... You know. Yeah, I mean, I see, I, I see it all the time when guys come in, especially in the, the summertime up in Queensbury, when they come looking at the shop, you know, they're like, oh, my lighter, I bought it at, you know, wherever, it sucks. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, you know, it's an eight, six dollar lighter. You know, if you if you buy something that has a lifetime warranty, it's normally going to last you a long time because they don't want to replace it. So you're looking for a good lighter, you know, look at ST DuPont, look at Sightcar. Even Lotus, so, you know, the remember those cyclones? We used to smoke with those all the time back in the day. Mm-hmm. You can throw that against the wall. It, it's not going to break. You know, it's just uh, you got to uh, just do a little research before you buy uh, buy a lighter without uh, warranties and stuff. Because usually the ones without warranties aren't the ones that are going to last. I bought a few with, with warranties. It was a Lotus. Yeah. Uh, when, when you squeeze it, the, it, it kind of comes up and then it goes and then it goes back down. What? There's a default in there. The tube yeah. for the butane 
comes unraveled because the mechanism goes up and down, and after three, four, five, six months, yeah. it's useless. You yeah. know what I mean? And the it's, best, it's just by the just by the simplest lighter you can. Maybe there's a door on the top, you know, something like this that has like a flip top. Yep. That uh, you know, it's not good. The flip top might go, but the the lighter is going to just keep lighting. You know. Yep. Those are actually poo. Is that cyclone? Yeah. Is that the cyclone or vertigo? This is actually this is actually the cyclone. Yep. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, don't bring your Dupont house. People don't take them on you if you're at a shop. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. So, yeah. you know, so what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about some sticks? Or you want to talk about 2019? I, I'm going old school today. What, what are you smoking at the moment? Right now, I am smoking a uh, Davidoff Short Perfecto. You know, it's one of my favorite smaller cigars. I've been smoking a lot more Robusto size lately. And the Short Perfecto is a little bit smaller than that, but... Uh, you know, it's it's a great size if you just have a little bit of time and something you can just kind of enjoy if you have limited space. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, no one could even guess the cigar that I'm smoking. If I even tell you, you're gonna be like, "What are you?" <laughs> Get back in the band. What? Let me see. Uh, show the show the band up. So the band. Don't show me the. Oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. What is it? Oh, uh, never mind. No, I didn't. I lied. I thought it was something else. You, you want me to show it to you? Show it to you. There you go. Oh, oops, hold on. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah. The Diamond Crown Maduro, dude. There you go. I'm. I don't know what it is. I'm. It, I'm hooked on the salty sweetness. That's good smoke. It's yeah, the flavor yeah, of the yeah, week. <laughs> it's the flavor of the week right here, dude. I've been doing this with some Bloody Marys, and and let me tell you something. It's 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 an awesome. It's awesome. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, you talk about classic <clears throat> facings. Diamond Crown's it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I've been I've been kind of like getting back into uh, some Connecticut's, although some of my reviews might not reflect that. Uh, there, I've, I've been really trying to to um, I won't say dig up some old fossils, but just kind of uh, not really ride the hey, what do you got new gig, and really walk into a humidor and take some time out. And, and and see some stuff. And then I also like to see some stuff that some of um, people who are no stranger uh, to the industry but had rolled some of the newer stuff. And, and it's, I don't know, I, I think the characteristics uh, per per blender, definitely some of them really sh uh, shine through, you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, I feel the same way. I've been going back. I'm a total, <coughs> excuse me, total creature of habit. And mm. I've been smoking a lot of the, same stuff, but I've been going back to a lot of those classic facings, um, a lot of stuff that's been on the market for a long time, but they're consistent and the flavor's great. You know, stuff you know from Perdomo, uh, Avo, Monte Cristo, even you know, um, just stuff. It's been there forever, but it's it's been good forever. So if mm -hmm. it's not broken, don't fix it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, from your customer's perspective, because obviously you have a retail place up in Queensbury, New York. So if you ever want a destination, it's right near Lake George. Area you can check them out, uh, uh, coupleofjoes.com. You know, tell them that we sent you for sure from the show. Danny D will definitely take care of you over there. But um, you know, from your customers' perspective, are, are they are they kind of their behavioral characteristics? Are they kind of jumping back into that, or had they never really focused on like the what's new aspect? Because I know here you obviously being native Rhode Island, you know up here it's all about hey, what's new? What's the latest and greatest? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely a period of time, probably like late 2015 to early 2016, where uh, boutiques were really popular, not just, you know, nationwide, but definitely in our store. Um, and I've seen over the last two years, um, a lot of the customers go back to those classic facings and, and it shows them what we carry in our humidor. You know, pretty much now, the majority of the cigars that we carry are all uh, bigger brands. They're not, not a lot of boutiques, but the end of the day is as much as there's there's some smaller companies that make great cigars and we have some smaller companies in the community that make great cigars but the overall picture you got to go with what the demand is and that's been you know the drew estates the davidoffs the altidus christoph perdomo some of these you know call brand names mm -hmm. um as opposed to smaller uh, boutique guys yeah yeah I'm, I'm finding that um that here it always slower to change, but from from what I'm seeing when I go to different shops, that that it seems to be coming back that that way, which is a testament to the boutiques for kind of lighting the fire underneath the butt of the classic facings to yeah. say, hey, you know, let, let's you know, you gotta you gotta do you gotta. It's not so much do do your job 
speaking like a true Patriots fan, you know, you got to do, you, you got to, you got to, you, you, it, it's time to, to realize that, you know, um, yeah. classic facings in boutiques do have their place for sure in the market. And um, it, 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 it's, it's, it seems to me that it's going back to, to the classic, which yeah. let's, let's talk a little bit about 2019. What do you think? Well, you know, obviously you're going to IPCPR and like, is there anything that you look forward to? I remember last year at this time, I was looking forward to a couple of brands. Um, I did at the end of 2017 my top five companies to kind of watch this year, and and one of the things I'm I'm excited about this year, um, and, and we can talk about that. Like, well, what do you think? What do you, what do you think's big gonna happen out of the, out of the industry? FDA gonna get their stuff well, together? No, moving on. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm <clears throat> definitely looking forward to uh, Kathleen, who's the owner of Cup of Joe's and Queensbury Cigar and Pipe. Uh, her and I are going out to TPE which is a little bit smaller of a trade show in Las Vegas uh, next month. So I'm curious to see what's going on there with some of the, the bigger companies. But uh, as far as 2019 goes, I see kind of the same thing I thought in 2018, where it's the return. Of, I, I, we've said this before. I've talked to you on the phone. It's the return of the big dogs, man. Yeah. Um, you said it a little bit a while ago. I think that uh, the bigger companies need a little, a little jolt, a little refocus to, you know, kind of realize that, Hey, you know, there are, there are smaller companies that can contend with us if we kind of let our foot off the gas. And I think last year they really came back strong. I saw it in a lot of big companies in terms of what people were asking for that normally wouldn't ask for those brands. And I think you're going to see more of that this year where, you know, the bigger guy is going to throw their weight around. And that's not necessarily a negative thing because at the end of the day, um, the customers benefit from them doing bigger sales promotions, stuff like that. I mean, we've done a lot of cool stuff at the shop this year and that's because of the you know the deeper pockets of the bigger brands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure i think i i think they're realizing that hey you know it, it it it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting year for them and looking forward to to it's kind of seeing how their marketing plays out right because the boutiques yeah. you know they, they rely heavily on social media we, we we've interviewed countless guests here that had said obviously social media has been a big uh, a big part of of their spreading out the word and stuff like that um it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how they they kind of jump on that uh for methodology or if yeah. they continue to go in a print magazine and hang you know what I mean, and, yeah. and whatnot, as opposed to really capture some something new. But it's interesting how you said that. You know, you, you work with companies, different companies that want to work with with the retail shop, and I, and and I mean, when I owned a cigar store, I, that's how it was. Like we, an event was never meet a rep, buy X, get X. It was. Right. Hey man, like we we're, we're, we're gonna give you a raffle prize and it's freaking awesome, or we're gonna give you uh, extra uh, swag and you pa you pass out swag. You never sold like we never sold t-shirts and hats and and it was just lighters cutters. Obviously, we had some some pipe, so we had some pipe and some pipe accessories. It was just sure. accessories and freaking like it, it, you and people would go crazy for like the the the. Yeah. Any brand's t shirt, you know what I mean? Or a hat or whatever, you know? And now, Absolutely. and now yeah. they're like selling them. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and for a long time that, that, that model worked. And, and we talked about that, I think, on the last episode I was on where we talked about events and the event thing. But um, I think the, the larger companies have really stepped up to the plate in terms of what they're willing to give a customer for their support, you know? Um, you know, we've given away Yeti coolers. I've given away Sono speakers. We've given away all kinds of uh, crazy stuff. Thousand dollar gift cards for a brand exclusively. Something we did this year that was great. But it's because those companies, and it's it's smart because if you think about it, do you want a customer's attention for three hours and one night, or their attention for six weeks to eight weeks, mm -hmm. um, focused on your brand, doing something a little bit bigger? And I think a lot of the companies have started to. Uh, realize that that's the more bang for the buck you know it might be a bigger ticket item you know to carry you know 30 40 100 yeti coolers in your warehouse but what's your return on that investment and i think that's what's going to drive people you know 
at least in our store, away from those smaller brands into the more uh, predominant big big boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you also have some of the smaller brands that are participating and getting in that there too. And, so. yeah. And we have a we have a, a great group of smaller uh, boutique companies that we work with who are tremendous, and it's a and it comes down to honestly the uh, like we said the level of commitment both ways, and uh, they have great salesmen. You know, uh, Oliver we've talked about before. Oliver from United Cigars is excellent. Um, Rob who does seven twenty four for Kirk Kendall is mm. great. Yeah, you know, Brett who works with uh, Mike Bellity on MLB. You know, those guys really separate those brands and they can launch something into a bigger brand, at least in our store, just by, you know, showing their face and the support that we give each other. Yeah. Yeah. If you see Rob from 724, tell him next time he sees me, don't tell me he's got to call me for my show. It's been a year and a half. I'll see him on Thursday. Yeah, know. say hey. Say <laughs> actually, what are we like 10 minutes into the show? You should show him this segment. Just be like, hey, man, don't. See me, he's like, oh, I got to email you. I got to, dude, come to the studio. Like, come, I don't know what to do. I, I'll, you know, you, you like cookies or bloody mirror? Like, what do you want me to do? Like, you know, what I mean? he's like one of the yeah. few people. I mean, Kurt's been on the show for sure and, and, and whatnot. And, yeah. and and I've done stuff with Kurt previous Stogie Geeks. But, uh, you know, it's it's like he every time I see him over at Havana Next Door, hey, Next week, I'll call you. Phone never rings. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't bring me any flowers, Rob. What's your story? Right? Especially, like, that brand. Like, 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 I'm a fan of the brand. Like, I remember when I had the opportunity to first meet Kurt. Um, it was at uh, one of Donna's events on a, on a Saturday uh, over in Cranston. And, you know, and, and I'm like, like, you know, dude, I'm a fan of the brand. I like it. You have all different sizes. I like stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's awesome. And yet, silence. Anyway. I think this did this year. I'll get. Don't worry. I'll bust his chops. Yeah. See him next week. We're doing an yep. event. So. Yep. And then if you see Oliver, tell him to come back on the show because it's been probably over definitely almost a year and a half. Oliver was one of my uh, last two days ago was my two year anniversary at Stogie Geeks. So I've been here for two years, and right. I remember Oliver. Thank you. I remember Oliver like being one of my first like three. Like he so he was in January of fifteen. No, 17. Yep. He was in January of 2017 uh, yeah. w- when he was on. And it's like, dude, my message to him, come back with those Byrons, right? <laughs> those Byrons yeah. are awesome because exactly- it, where are they in Rhode Island? Nowhere. They're, they're at cupofjoes.com, though. <laughs> I can tell you that. There you go. All right. There you go. That's good. There you go. And I think this year, like IBCPR, um, I, I I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there, but from the people that we interviewed, um, I, I, it's like every year there seems to be a buildup. And then it's like you kind of wait for that buildup and then you just get some information. And I think that with the birth of social media, someone in your position, retail manager, retail owner, already knows what they're walking into pre-IBCPR. Right, they give right. you the list. They give you, you know, because that's not what what it is. And I wonder if um, that methodology is going to continue the same, or if they're going to have some sort of like riveting announcement. Because when I started yeah. doing either Cigar Club Radio or Stogie Geeks, and that project started in 2014, what happened was like like IBCPR was like the big. You were waiting. You know what I mean? It was like the Disneyland, the Disneyland week. And then now, like, the, some of the messages just kind of, you know. And, 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 and I hope that in 2019 that maybe some of the classic facings kind of can bring back that hype. Or some of the boutiques can kind of really ra- rally together and, 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 and make it be what the show was intended to be. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I, honestly, I, I feel the same way. Even if I was a consumer, there wasn't, like, any hoopla over the the, re- um, the manufacturers like social media or stuff. You know, I came back and everyone was asking me, "What's new? What's new?" And I was like, "Nothing really." <laughs> you know, it's it's right. it's I, I you know, there's a lot of I have a lot of product coming in, so stay tuned. But a lot of it's stuff you know. There was a few things from like all to this. They extended some lines and some new uh, like Drew Estate stuff, but it wasn't a lot. No, but you know that it, honestly, when when you talk about social media, it was. You know, Kathleen uh, and I sitting down and talking about what we're going to do from the retail to keep 
our customers excited about IPCPR mm-hmm. um, because I think that uh, you know, especially with the timing of the show, and um, it wasn't you know, it's not it wasn't in uh, the sands. It was in the convention center. Like the retailer, some of them were just kind of disgruntled that some things had changed from previous years. Mm-hmm. Whereas consumers are still excited because there's such that aura and mystique because they can't go. Yeah, and. Um, just it, it's a cool time of year because they get to see all the stuff come into the shop if they're regulars. And but in terms of the retail, there, there, there was nothing there that was like you know, you know, blew my hair back. It was yeah. just you know, it's business as usual and get our job done. Right, right. And 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 the people that we interview week in and week out, we we I, I we get that impression. Like especially when leading up, you know, May comes around and we start talking IPCPR. And we start talking right. about that, and and you know they well we got an announcement, and it's like okay, and they they you know we get press releases every day of all the different cigar companies or whatever coming into the the media here, and you know you're releasing sizes, like yeah. you know what I mean, like like and and then you know I go through my my rolodex of email and my busy task day, like everyone else has their, and I'm like, am I missing something? Like, am I missing something? Like, in my email, I have a Story Geeks folder, like a subfolder that, you know, it's either sure. a to-do list or whatever. And sometimes, like, okay, I read it. All the news changed it. But I go back and I reread it, like, when I have a time. I'm like, okay, you launched three new sizes of a, of a blend. Like, uh, like you know, like, big deal. You know what I mean? Like, I know size changes and everything, but, you know, I want a little bit more, want a little bit more sizzle. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know? absolutely. And, uh. Unfortunately, with you know, obviously with some of the FDA stuff, there's there's some limitations on what they can do in terms of new brands. Mm. But it, you know, it's it, it's exactly what you said. It's it's nothing exciting. Um, it's it's just important for you know retailers like us to just be able to go to the show and buy smart and you know do the right thing by the shop. But hopefully, you know, if we get everything resolved, we can go back to that, you know, mm. this coming soon and all that cool stuff. You know, there's been some cool releases this year. You know, there was a lot of Davidoff and Avo limited editions, which was great. Yep. Um, but it was throughout the year. It wasn't like an IPCPR thing. So it didn't have that uh, July hype that you normally get with no. a trade show. No. So, um, no. We'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, you know, I think this year um, – it's funny. I, I I officially received every um, episode of Cigar Club Radio, like audio episode from there. I have it all archived, and nice. I went back to a couple. I and I actually have a clip in 2015 saying FDA is going to kick the can down the road. Like I've been saying here for two years, right? And I said, by the time they figure it out, it's going to be 2020. I'm not that far off. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, dude, everybody's all panicking. And what are we going to do? I'm like, dude, by the time they figure it out, it's going to be 2020. Moving on. Like, you know what I mean? And then if they do, again, uh, you know, it's going to be a dollar more per stick. Moving on. Like, in all this five years of whatever. So my prediction in 2019 is I'm 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 gonna let it ride. It, it's gonna be 2020 before we have, but before yeah. we have a resolution for uh for, uh, for that uh, there. Maybe that'll be the next intro for Story Geeks this year. All my little sound clips from from from, from, from way back when. And then uh, I think that um, the industry only scratched the surface with consolidation of companies. Like, so companies sure. that have become bigger. Because if you look at other industries besides cigars, that seems to be, you know, the, the, the competition who's the most annoying, right? And this is something that I learned in my career over at Xerox at a very young age. You know, it's the old cliche that the old timers used to tell me. If you can't beat them, buy them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I think we're going to see a lot more uh, consolidation. And that's my prediction for 2019. A lot more consolidation um, there. And FDA will be kicked can down the road, more of the same. It'll be December of 2019. We'll have the same conversation. No one knows anything. And then um, um, my only kind of question, Mark, and and we can get your take on this, is what do you think about the collaboration stuff? You think we're going to see more of that? Because 2018 had that feel where, like, first of all, 2017, last year at this time, the beginning of 2018 had more of a collaboration feel. I thought it was going to be bigger than it was. 
and then it wasn't. And I don't know if that was just FDA or people are still trying to collaborate and figure it out. Or what do you think? You you, you think that there's going to be more of that? I, I think it's going to be more of the same collaborations. I don't know if there mm. in terms of like you know the there'll be new pairings and new you know what do you want to call it, tag teams or whatever. I think you're going to see more releases from the same groups that work together now. Maybe like all to this and AJ Fernandez or AJ with general, you know, guys who are comfortable working together yeah. and have those work relationships. I could see that continuing um, because some of those um, lines have been successful. So, yep. you know, keep, keep the momentum going. Um, as far as new stuff, I just, I don't know if you have the time to do it. And there's just so many of those collaborations on the market. You don't want to get lost either. That's um, good point. But I think, I think it's what you said, you know, when it comes to the consolidation of the industry, it's almost like a, uh, you know, a senior project for some of these smaller companies to do their presentation for a company that wants to buy them. Hey, this is what we could do together. And this is what I can bring to the table. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you, you might see a lot of that. But um, in terms of new stuff in collaborations, I don't know. But I think you'll see a lot of collaborations continuing into 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So before we take a quick break and get right into the Stogies of the Week section, we're going to divide up these two segments. Is that OK, production crew? You want it? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So, anything else you want to add? Like, what? What are you? Any out there idea that you want to see for 2019 or, or anything like that? Or you just you're good. Yeah, <laughs> I would say, like I said, I think 2019 is going to be continuing of the the growth and the return of the classic facings and bigger brands, mm. and hopefully we can see um, some positive traction with the FDA and some other stuff. But you know, like you said, I, I think we'll have, be having this conversation in 2020 and, and going forward. So yeah. we'll see. But hopefully good things, right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in like two minutes. And we're going to talk about Sticks of the Week, so what we've been having. Stay tuned. 